Welcome to part three of using future climate projections. My name is Kari Tyler, and I'm the user engagement and training specialist at the Pacific Climate Impacts Consortium. I come to the climate change conversation with a background in adult education, and I've been working on climate change adaptation and resilience for about eight years now. So Trevor was just talking to you about climate projections for the province of BC. And as a reminder, across the province, the kinds of things that we're going to be seeing are warmer winter temperatures and fewer days below freezing, more extreme hot days in the summers, and longer dry spells in the summer months. There'll also be more precipitation in the rainy season, so in the fall, the winter, and the spring throughout most of the province. And there will be an increased frequency and intensity of precipitation and storm events. So when it rains, as Trevor provided an example for, um, there'll be more extreme precipitation events. And we've been talking about all of these things as uh, sort of separate concepts, and we've been talking about the multiple options of future pathways. Um, and so when we're thinking about how to actually make good use of this future climate information, the first thing to do is to actually use it. Use the climate information that we have. Uh, use the tools on the PKIC website. And when you're using those tools and you're trying to use them to inform your decisions, remember those multiple pathways, that there's a range of future projections and future options, and consider the ones uh, that are a good fit for your own context and your own time frame, as well as your risk tolerance. Does it matter more that you're more prepared for sort of more extreme weather, or is that less of an issue in your decision-making context? Because these range of future options add complexity to this situation, one of the things that's extremely important is to get out of our silos. Um, so engage across different disciplines to understand the implications. The climate science can tell us a really good story about how climate is changing, but what that means for you, for your responsibility, for your decision making, and in your own particular context is something that you have to sort out with the people that you work with, with the people that are impacted by your decisions. So engage others and look for diversity in that engagement. And if you're gonna be making decisions and considering future climate, chances are you're not gonna get this right or perfect right out of the gate. And change continues, so plan to iterate. Iterate, iterate, iterate. Design your processes so that they repeat, so that you have the opportunity to come back and check in along the way. So with these changes in future climate, what does that mean for how we think about the problem and think about our work considering climate change? The first thing that we have to keep in mind is that stationarity is dead. If you think about that image that Trevor showed earlier, where you've got the one historical pathway and multiple options for the future, part of what that indicates is that change is coming and change isn't going to stop. So there are scenarios that you can kind of imagine where you can drive along a straight road and still get to where you're going by looking in the rearview mirror. But we all know that driving by looking in the rearview mirror has never been a good practice. Similarly, we've been making decisions assuming a static climate and sometimes assuming a lot of stationarity using heuristics that may not actually have been the best decision-making mechanisms for our situation. So climate change give us, gives us an opportunity to kind of open the hood on our decision-making mechanisms and incorporate change, reflect on how we make decisions, and make better decisions incorporating the changes that are coming. One of the other things that we need to do considering climate change is plan for resilience. There's a lot of uncertainty on how different climate impacts will interact, and not just in our local environment, but around the world. And one of the best ways to navigate this uncertainty is plan for resilience. The concept of resilience is really well established, both in the biological sciences and sort of coming out of fields of psychology. So there's lots out there that you can read. But be considering resilience. Plan for flexibility. Determine what safe failure might mean in your context. And find multiple pathways to achieve the aims that you desire. 
The third thing to be keeping in mind is that there's a lot of opportunity because of these res restrictions. So this is a quote from a game designer that restrictions breed creativity, but it's actually a fairly common concept in a lot of creative disciplines. Putting some restrictions on your decision making um, forces you to think about things in slightly different ways. And this can be a really good opportunity to improve the way that you do things, improve the relationships with the diversity of actors that you work with, and come up with opportunities to make the world better for a wide variety of people. So the field of climate change adaptation and resilience has been around for over a decade, and there's a lot that has been learned along the way. I strongly encourage you to seek out information and learn from the community that exists and of practitioners. So I just want to use this slide that's um, been developed by my colleague Johanna Wolf with the BC Climate Action Secretariat that really distills a lot of the lessons that she's learned through her experience in adaptation. The first things are to start, take action. Um, this pathway is non-linear. This is why we've got a squiggly line here. You're not going to be able to get started, make a plan, and implement it exactly the way that you imagined it at the first get-go. There's going to be disruptions and changes along the way. So start, for sure start. There's urgency to this. Identify a good team of people from uh, disparate backgrounds with different sort of disciplinary backgrounds and insight um, and be considering also indigenous perspective in a lot of these decisions and in your how those can relate to your context. Focus on what you know. There's great resources here in this video series and online about how climate is going to be changing, but you also have a ton of information about your own context and your own areas of expertise. So start there. Expect surprises as you get going, things are going to change, and that's part of how uncertainty rears its head. Embed climate action, resilience building, and adaptation into existing processes. If you're designing a policy or designing a program or setting some processes in place that will outlast you in your particular role, incorporate climate change into those. Again, use resilience principles. Apply those in your context. Use adaptive management principles. These things are very similar. Explore your own data as well. Uh, very similar to what you know, you are probably in an institution or in a space where you have access to your own databases. Is there information in that data that you haven't been making the best use of? And how will the things that you are tracking be affected by climate change? Try things out, run pilots, uh, engage with people in other regions who have been trying things out. Start small and amp up to build energy and build on successes. If you're looking for uh, proposals or funding and things like that, the sad truth is that funding cycles can be short, and so be shovel ready. Have ideas of things that you can do right away that are gonna have an impact. Collaborate with others. Collaborate with people outside your discipline. Find people to work with um, who might be able to carry on and build on the knowledge that you've generated, even if things change for you. Plan for action. Focus on getting things done. Revisit your processes, because that's an important part of iteration. Iterate and learn. Thank you very much for joining us in this video series. If you have any questions, feel free to contact Trevor or myself at PKIC, and our email addresses are on the screen. Thank you. Mm -hmm.